Well, we have the dog days of summer and now it kind of looks like we're into the dead days of winter. And just like we have concerns about the excessive heat in summer for animals, we of course have similar concerns when it comes to the health and safety of animals in these frigid temperatures. So why don't you come along on a drive with me as we explore the beautiful winter countryside here and discuss things to be able to keep your pets happy, healthy, and warm this winter season. Dr. Brian Langlois and uh, I'm driving through the beautiful winter wonderland of northern Pennsylvania today and uh, well it may look bright and sunny out but my temperature gauge on my dashboard is reading about 17 degrees right now and that is at the height of the day uh, when the sun is going to be at its warmest and without any kind of wind chill so needless to say we are in what they consider the dead of winter I do apologize if I appear a little dark here obviously with the sun casting shadows inside the car it doesn't make everything the, the perfect lighting scenario but uh, but uh, we are kind of driving through and I figured, well, since it is this cold and it's probably gonna stay this cold for a while, uh, at least in these parts, it would be a good time to go ahead and talk about some cold weather tips to keep your pets safe, ha happy, and warm during these winter months. Uh, and we're gonna kind of try to cover the gambit here of you know dogs and cats, as well as some large animals, horses and cows, uh, and of course the outdoor feral cat population, which everybody is concerned about this time of year as well when it comes to the cold. So, you know, let's go ahead and dive right in. And uh, the first thing, you know, I kind of mentioned, and I mentioned this when I talked a little bit about um, the, the hot weather tips for your, for your dog or cat, uh, you have to kind of know the breed that you're dealing with. So if you have a dog that is a northern breed, a, a Malamute, a, a Husky, Newfoundland, St. Bernard, uh, any, anything in those types of, of breed ranges, they love this weather. They wait all year for this weather to hit. Um, you know, and they will stay out. They really, you don't have to worry so much about them being affected by the cold. They still can be, so it's not like where you can just leave them outside 24 hours a day uh, because, you know, that will affect them. But uh, they will they will frolic and revel in this weather. It is perfect for them. It's what they were bred for. Uh, it's what their you know coats were designed to mean to you know maintain their heat to allow them to enjoy these types these types of conditions. All of that stuff. So um, you know you certainly can take them on long walks. You can let them enjoy the the snow and frolicking around and playing things like that without too much of a concern. Now of course. As I said, you don't want to leave them outside 24 hours a day with no shelter, and we'll talk about shelter in a second. Um, but just keep that in mind that uh, you know they usually do pretty well on these conditions. Uh, now, on the opposite end of the spectrum are the really short-coated dogs, or, or dogs that almost seem to have no coat. So you're talking, you know, your Chihuahuas, your Frenchies, your Bulldogs. Um, uh, pugs, things of that nature that are very short-coated, they are probably not going to be tolerating the cold nearly as well. And as a result, uh, you have to be careful with them. You have to make sure that they are uh, protected and, you know, maybe they go outside for short, shorter periods of time in really cold weather. Don't be afraid if they'll tolerate it to put jackets or coats on them. That definitely does help conserve some of that central body heat. Um, but, you know, you don't want to leave them outside for any long period of time because they can suffer the effects of hypothermia pretty quickly if they are out in very cold conditions. Uh, they just do not have the, the body warming or the hair warming uh, mechanisms or of trapping that air and keeping them a little bit warmer uh, that the northern breeds do. And again, it's, it's just what they're bred for, uh, you know, so you have to kind of keep all of that stuff in mind. Um, the one thing with both 
uh, or any dog that's going to be outside, obviously, is they do very well at, at producing and maintaining a lot of their own body heat, but only if they're dry. So if you take them out on a rainy winter day or, or they're frolicking around, let's say they jump in a stream or something, whatever, however they may get wet, um, you definitely want to dry them off because if they do stay wet, the cold is really going to get to them and affect them. Uh, and and you know, no matter how tolerant they may be of the cold, a, a wet dog is always going to suffer effects of severe cold much quicker than a dry dog. So keep that in mind. You want to kind of keep them dry. Uh, if you are looking potentially at having your dog kept outside or you know somebody that's keeping their dog outside for long periods of time, and there are people that do this, you have to make sure that that dog has adequate shelter, and that shelter has to be at least three-sided, ideally four-sided with an entryway. Um, it has to be impervious to moisture, so it, it can't be, you know, have holes in it that's going to allow rain or snow to get in or whatever. It has to be able to maintain the heat that the dog produces uh, in those situations. So one of the ones that, you know, we think of in these cases is what they call dog glues. Um, those are ones that are built and designed specifically for colder weather climates for dogs, um, and usually they are certified up to a certain temperature point um, or down to, or down to a certain temperature point I guess I should say uh, and they, they work really really well a really well constructed doghouse will work very well as, as shelter too um, when you are looking at maybe insulating the shelter or putting things in there everybody kind of thinks sometimes oh I'm gonna throw some blankets in there because that's gonna make them you know much more warm and, and comfy and it might initially but if that blanket or those towels or whatever you're putting in there get wet at any point, then you're right back to the same thing. There's no heat trapping effect to blankets that way, and actually the cold is just going to transfer right to the dog, uh, and that's just going to make them colder. So you don't want to use any kind of blankets or anything like that in in dog houses or dog rooms this time of year. Really the best thing out there uh, that you can put in there for insulation is just regular old straw. Straw works great as an insulating um, medium and uh, you don't have to worry about the moisture so much with it. You do may have to change it out from time to time, but uh, usually the straw does really, really well in those types of situations to help provide a little insulation in those dog houses. Same thing for feral cats and we'll talk about that in a little bit later on. Um, so if you do see any uh, animals out in these types of conditions, the really cold weather, make sure that you uh, have shelter for your own dog or that if you see somebody uh, with a dog out that they have shelter for their dog. Um, there are laws and there are rules on the books that require certain shelter parameters to be met. And if they're not, the person can be cited and the dog can be taken away from them. Sadly, every year we hear of cases of dogs that freeze to death outside because they do not have adequate shelter. Um, and it, it is a needless death. Uh, it is one that should be brought up, uh, you know, any owner that allows their dog to have that happen to them really should be brought up on severe cruelty charges because there is no reason for that to happen. And if you see an animal that appears to be outside for a long period of time suffering the effects of being exposed to really cold temperatures, do not be afraid to contact your, uh, you know, local police, your local uh, humane officers, humane societies, dog wardens, whoever you have to, don't be afraid to contact them. Uh, to to have the animal checked and to have the facility checked to make sure that it's adequate for that animal. So keep all of that stuff in mind when you're when you're looking at shelters for animals. You want to make sure also that you take care of their feet when they're out for walks. Uh, their paws, paw pads, and paws again they do provide a little bit of protection, um, but they still can get cold shocked. Uh, one thing we also worry about uh, if they're walking through the snow or romping through the snow and stuff like that is kind of these ice balls clinging up and, and getting stuck in between their toes or in, in around their foot pads uh, on the rest of their coat too but especially down by their feet and that can be very cold and very painful if you think about it yeah, for us, it would be the equivalent of basically grabbing a bunch of ice cubes and just holding onto them really tight. That type of stinging pain that you get from that eventually, well, that's what they're feeling with their feet. So if you can, the best thing out there are to get those little booties or whatever for dogs, um, you know, that, that help just keep their feet dry and actually give them a little bit more traction if the, if the uh, areas are slippery. Um, but if they won't tolerate that, then at least if, you know, maybe having a, a towel with you or something like that, uh, that you can quickly, uh, you know, work some of those ice balls out of their pads if they seem to be really uncomfortable with it. Um, the other thing when it comes to their feet that you have to kind of be aware of 
is any kind of ice melt that's put out on uh, surfaces or walks or driveways, things like that. They do make pet friendly ice melts, uh, but a lot of people still use regular ice melts and those are some salt based uh, compounds, very similar sometimes to Epsom salts. So what we worry about more than anything is uh, if they do kind of trudge through that and then when they get home, they start licking their paws to get that material off, it can cause some gastrointestinal upset. You may see some vomiting and diarrhea uh, from that. Uh, it may also, depending on the, the product, may cause a little bit of irritation to their paws. Uh, so you want to be uh, on the lookout for that. And the easiest way to really avoid any of that happening would be to just go ahead and have a warm washcloth or a, a warm water towel or whatever and just wipe their feet off when they come in. So you kind of remove that salt residue from their feet. Uh, and you certainly can use that same warm water uh, washcloth or towel or whatever to uh, help move or remove some of those ice balls that may cling to their coat or in between their feet. You don't wanna use super hot water, um, cause obviously you, you can do damage and burn their skin with that. But uh, you know, if you want, if they'll allow it, uh, just lukewarm water or whatever, just uh, soaking their foot in it a little bit to dissolve some of those ice crystals or balls that may have developed. You certainly can try that as well. But uh, most dogs are fine with you just kind of uh, massaging uh, things with a warm washcloth or something just to remove and melt off those ice balls so they don't cause any further problems going on down the line. So obviously, you know, taking care of their feet is a, is a big thing. Um, we talked, uh, obviously, as we've gone through here about some of the things to worry about with, um, uh, you know, small animals. Large animals they have concerns as well. Uh, and I think it's sometimes things people don't necessarily think of. But, uh, you know, you definitely want to, if you have horses or cows, check with your veterinarian, see what kind of things you might need to have in place to allow uh, for safe and uh, happy times for your horses uh, or other livestock that may be out on the farm. Some of the big things that we, we hit upon when we talk about uh, ensuring things for horses uh, especially is making sure that their calorie content is good and that their, their food and diet intake is proper. Uh, you know, you may think, well, in the winter they're not going to be quite as active, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not using more energy to create heat to keep themselves warm. So while it may be counterintuitive, you may actually need to increase their, their diet uh, and calorie intake a little bit in the winter months to help uh, them maintain their body weight and uh, you know maintain their warmth. Cool, fresh water is another big thing with horses. Uh, again, people may think that, you know, well, they're not doing much, it's the winter, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be sweating, they shouldn't be exercising, so they don't need as much water. No, they might even need a little bit more water than normal in the winter months, again, because you are worried about uh, them potentially dehydrating, uh, but also just the effects of all of that uh, cold and, and trying to keep warm and all that is certainly can uh, cause some issues with them. So you definitely want to make sure that you keep the water fresh. You want to make sure that there's no frozen uh, water, especially the automatic waterers. You got to go out and check those every day. Make sure that there's fresh, cool water for them uh, and you won't run into any problems. Uh, colicking from not having enough water is something that we sometimes see in the winter with horses. So, But again, you definitely want to check with your vet about all of that stuff um, and any other farm animal tips as far as uh, keeping them safe. Final thing uh, to kind of talk about here would be um, feral cats and outdoor cats. And obviously there's a lot of people that take care of colonies, take care of feral cats, uh, and, and want to make sure that they are doing okay. Most outdoor cats do very well. They will throw a lot of heat themselves, again, provided they stay dry. So, so long as you have a, a pretty good area where they can hang out and uh, get out of the elements, usually they will keep themselves fairly, um, uh, fairly warm. But you can make very inexpensive out of plastic tubs, and we're showing you some pictures of that now, uh, feral cat shelters. And again, you can just pack them with straw and it works really, really well for them. Uh, they, they really enjoy them. Multiple cats usually can stay in them and there's plenty of online sites that can give you instructions on how to make them as far as all of that goes. Other things kind of just like you would always worry about. You wanna make sure there's always a water supply in the really cold uh, temperatures, water freezes very quickly. So even if you can have maybe a heated do dog bowl, uh, heated water bowls out there uh, for dogs, those work really, really well for feral cats and just keeping the water unfrozen so that they can drink it. Um, you wanna make sure that they have a really good supply of food. Uh, dry food is certainly fine. That will work perfectly fine for cats. Uh, canned food you can use, but again, that can get a little tricky. Things can freeze, so you wanna be, um, you 
you know, aware of all that. So make sure that you uh, take care of the feral cats. You watch to see how they're doing. And uh, if you notice any problems with any of them, obviously uh, let your veterinarian know. But like I said, in most cases, ferals do pretty well when it comes to uh, 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 taking care of themselves in the winter, so long as you know they have a good food supply, they have water, they have shelter, and and uh, they 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 do fine. Um, as far as that goes. So that kind of covers a, a quick overview of some of the basic things you want to be aware of when it comes to, you know, taking care of your pets in the winter. Of course, you always want to be on the lookout for any signs of problems such as potential hypothermia in your pet. Um, I warn people too, just because it's winter doesn't mean that it's okay to leave your pets locked in a car. Uh, they can suffer hypothermia in a car just as easily as they can suffer heat stress in a car. And even if it is, uh, you know, a cooler day out in the winter and you have them locked in a car and you're dealing with one of those northern breeds, you actually still can get heat issues and heat stroke issues even in those types of temperatures, which you may not think about. So still do not put, leave any animals locked in a car for any reason. There's no reason for it. Um, and you know, they still can suffer pretty serious health uh, concerns because of it. So uh, keep all of that stuff in mind as well. And that, of course, is going to bring us to uh, what everybody loves about this show, and that is Doc's top five takeaways on this episode of Driving with Doc. And so let's get right into it with number one. And that, of course, is that remember, different breeds have different cold tolerances. So kind of know the breed of animal that you have to make sure that you understand what that animal may need or not need as far as winter care uh, is concerned. And that goes to large animals as well, not just... Um, small animals. There, there are certain breeds of horses, I'm sure, that tolerate the cold a lot better than others. Certain breeds of uh, other livestock that do, you know, there's certainly things that you need to talk to your vet about at, at all times to make sure you're, you're taking care of them in the winter months. Number two, um, if you do have an animal, a dog that needs to uh, stay outside, make sure they have the proper shelter. And by law that's required and by ethics that, re that is required. So uh, all the things we talked about there, you wanna make sure that that shelter is adequate, it is dry, it is providing enough warmth, uh, and it provides everything that that you know animal needs to survive. It's the same thing on the large animal side again as well. Horses certainly can use um, you know, uh, shelters that they can go into. So uh, uh, they, they do enjoy the colder weather, but they also do need a place where they can get out of the elements. So a lean-to structure usually in, in the horse paddocks is fine. Um, so that brings us to number three. Uh, you want to always protect their feet, both from the effects of cold and snow and ice buildup there, as well as from the ice melt that they may walk through if they're walking through uh, sidewalks or things like that. Keep their feet protected and uh, they'll be much happier and healthier for it. Um, number four, as I just said, large animals uh, need to be protected from the weather and the cold weather as well. So you want to make sure that you have the proper mechanisms and blankets and other things in place to be able to take care of horses and cows and other farm animals. And if you have questions, certainly talk to your veterinarian about it. Uh, you know, there are also veterinary sites that you can go ahead and look at to make sure that you can uh, keep your horses and cows and sheep and goats and whatever else you have very happy, very healthy uh, during this winter season. And number five is, of course, make sure that you take care of your feral cat colonies properly. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, these cats do get the right amount of food and water and that their water is always fresh and that they're able to uh, you know, access it at all times. You wanna make sure that their shelter is adequate if you can provide it for them. Again, we talked about the, the sheltering uh, uh, previously, that's very easy to make for feral cat colonies. So that is about going to do it for this episode of Driving with Doc as I continue on my merry way here. I hope everybody got some good information out of this. Of course, if you have any questions at all, feel free to either drop them in the comments or email us at uh, drivingwithdoc at gmail.com. I will certainly try to answer them. If you have any ideas for future topics, uh, certainly drop them in the comments or send them to that email as well. I will be more than happy to try to do the research that I can to provide more educational fun rides for you all. And I uh, hope everybody stay, is staying warm and uh, uh, enjoying the winter month a little bit, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to enjoy the winter months a bit in the snow and the cold. Uh, it's warm months, I'm sure, will be right around the corner and we'll all be, you know, waiting for winter or cooler months to come by again. So uh, until that time, again, uh, hope everybody stays happy, safe, and warm. And uh, we'll be taking another drive, I'm sure at some point, talking about another important topic when it comes to your pet's health the next time we go driving with Doc.